Hi everyone! Ooh, I'm so happy to be with you. My name is Sandra Fondufe. The H is silent. Welcome to another episode of Sandra Thinks. Today, we are going to be discussing five tips for finding purpose amidst career pressures. That is, five tips for finding your purpose amidst whatever career pressures. So, this particular video came to me because again, I'm in my early 30s, early 30s. And a lot of my friends, people that I see in coffee shops when I'm writing around my city, people I meet online, digital conversations, personal friends of mine, these are conversations that everyone is having, you know, that balance between work, life, what am I doing now? How am I supposed to show up in this season of my life? What am I doing? You know, there's, there's all of these questions. And a lot of people seem to be having a hard time really figuring out this career thing. The world is changing so much. I mean, recently my friends and I were making a joke, right? You know, AI is now here. And people are like, oh my God, does that mean I'm going to lose my job? What am I going to do? Is it going to replace me? <laughs> I know all those kind of funny things. <laughs> Before I continue what I'm saying, first of all, AI can't replace you. By that I mean cannot. The people using AI are gonna replace you. That's another subject. So back to what I was saying. Here are five tips when it comes to your career. Number one, retreats. Retreat, retreat, retreat. You can never have too many retreats. There is this man of God called um, Joshua Selman, whom I love, I've always loved from a long time and respect and it was something that he said this was last year for me last year was a very very difficult not difficult year but a challenging year it was a year that like pressed me you know seriously and one of the things that i remember listening to him about he was saying that him as a person he does all these retreats in different seasons so at the beginning of the year that would be one retreat right and then at the beginning of every single season. So think of it like per quarter. First quarter, beginning of January, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, at the end of the quarter. So about maybe a week or two before December towards the next year. Then you wanna have weekly retreats, right? Weekly retreats, these are retreats where you're taking one day of the week. I don't know if it's Monday, I don't know if it's Sunday. I don't know how you wanna do it. You know, taking it easy on the food and just spending time thinking right? Breaking these things down. But there's different types of retreats. And of course you can have retreats that are with friends, you know, how wonderful would it be if you and your friends didn't only meet to pop champagne? Sometimes you have to meet your friends to pray. Sometimes you have to meet your friends to plan, to strategize for seasons, right? So the point I'm making is that there is a way that you can use a retreat to answer one or two questions about your career. What does a retreat look like? A retreat happens in different formats. You may have the option towards the longer retreats when you want to step away from home and go to the hills, go to like a private hotel somewhere and you can have time to think and plan. Sometimes you don't always have that money or time or ability. What if you have a lot of responsibilities, right? You should still have an area in your house where you can step back, step away from all your different responsibilities and you can spend time thinking. I am currently a doctor. This is not what my spirit wants to do. I feel like I should maybe still heal people, but differently, right? I am a writer. I'm earning $2. I think I have capacity for 10. What do I need to do from where I'm sitting to leave from two and get to 10? You're not going to find that on Instagram talking on popular pages, on comment sections about things that are happening. I'm not saying that Instagram is not entertaining. It's very entertaining, but you're not gonna get those kind of answers that really move your life from one point to another. So retreat, 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 too important. As time goes on, we're going to be building tribes of women on this platform where we'll be able to take time together as women, as a group under a similar tribe and do these things together. So number one is retreat. The second thing, which is very similar to retreat, but is different, is prayer. The Bible tells you a man should pray always, not sometimes, always. And I know that we've come to a place in civilization where people feel like it's not cool to pray. 
or they want to pray every time with music from other people or pray listening to other people or pray when they want to, or maybe when they go to church, if they do go to church, maybe they're going to pray then. Do you know that a man can be inspired by God to propel himself to a certain path and he can change his career? This has happened to so many good people in life than you can imagine. Prayer works two ways. Prayer is not just me sitting here and talking, God, I want this, I want a new car. I want to change my career. I need your guidance. I want more money. I want a husband. I want children. Demands, demands, demands. Prayer works two ways. You ask and then you listen. What kind of prayers are you making about your career? You have to understand that what is very key to know is we have to be even willing to walk in the will of what we were created for. When I was a little girl, there was a book that I read, The Mayor of Casterbridge, and I never forget this line where the writer Thomas Hardy would say, we plan and we scheme, but fate has an upper hand. Over the years, I've thought about this phrase a bit more. And, and you know, it's very interesting to me because what he was calling fate there was really God. And that there is a will. A man can move in the way that is the will of God in his life. That if God says that this is what I want you to be, this is the best, most optimal path that you will walk. And this is the purpose, the great purpose that you will live for me towards other people. For his own need, God's own need. That your life becomes more like a channel. There is a way to ask, to continue to ask that question through prayer. So when it has to do with your career, the second way that you can be intentional about finding out what you're meant to do, the purpose for which you were born, is through prayer. And in all of these things, in all of these things, I'm not forcing my beliefs on you, but I'm inviting you to trust God. There is a part of you that is just waiting for that second connection. I'm asking you that as you navigate this journey of purpose, invite Him. Speak to God and say, oh God, I am still struggling to understand why I was made. I know I have all these gifts, all of these gifts. I know I'm good at so, so, and so thing, but God, I don't know what I'm meant to do. And I, and I want to invite you to come into my heart, to come into my life and walk with me. Teach me your ways. Some people say that you're the God of wisdom, that you're the most intelligent being that ever was. I just want a little bit. Teach me just a little bit. Some say that there is a peace that comes from you that no one else can give me. God, I have given my heart to all kinds of people, friends, and they betrayed me. They've hurt me. I've betrayed other people. God, be with me. Show me this thing towards my purpose. How do I get to do this? Only you can help me. So I'm inviting you to speak to God in this kind of way at the end of this video and ask for all the questions that you don't know. And guys, I promise you that you're, you will be stepping into one of the most exciting, beautiful journeys of your life. And like I've said on this platform, that's what we're here for. We're gonna be building a tribe of wonderful, like-minded women around the world. And maybe you could be one of those women that will join us. We're gonna navigate this path together. We're gonna to have conversations. We're here as a tribe that will help each other grow under the auspices of God, of course. I love you guys so much. Thank you for allowing me to share my two cents with you. I hope that you learned something. Leave your comments in the, in the comment section and let's, let's begin this conversation. Let me know if you're having any struggles towards finding your purpose. And um, I look forward to speaking with you next week. My name is Sandra Fondufe, the H is silence. I love you guys and God loves you more. Bye. Oh no, wait, 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 not bye, not bye. So I'm wearing this beautiful dress. So it's, it's a really pretty dress. It's done by Rosanna Couture. And I just want to thank her so much for allowing me to sit here effortlessly as little brown skinned Barbie, enjoying the fashion. Okay, okay. Today we're going to be discussing five tips towards finding purpose among career pressures.